Today we're going to walk through how to use uh, your Cafe Scribe digital textbook reader. So to access your uh, Cafe Scribe digital textbook reader, you can do it a couple of different ways. You can go to cafescribe.com and just click on the toolbar at the top where it says Cafe Scribe Reader. Or you can just go to a web browser and enter in the URL cafescribe.reader.com. The first time that you log into the Cafe Scribe Reader, you'll need to create an account. So you'll just click here where it says create an account and enter in some basic information. First name, last name, your email address, and you'll need to select a username and password. Just make sure that you select something easy so that you can remember it in the future. Under school, you'll want to type in the name of the school that you are attending. So this will make sure that you are in the same community and can share notes with other students on your campus. Once you've filled out all the information, um, just hit submit and it'll create your account. To log into the account, you'll enter your username and password and click login. And it'll open up right up to your bookshelf. So you can see here the books that you have on your bookshelf and some basic information like your last viewed page, bookmark, and notes. These are quick ways to jump right to um, your notes or your bookmarks, wherever you might want to be. Also at the end you have your book information that lets you know where you're at in your copy, paste, and print limits. To activate a new book, in the upper right hand corner click on where it says activate books and it'll bring up a window for you. Now if you've purchased your book within a, a bookstore, you'll have an activation code. So you'll just enter your activation code, click on the magnifying glass, and it'll search and select those books for you, and then just check off the ones that you want to go ahead and activate, and click Activate Books, and it'll populate right there on your bookshelf for you. To open up a book, all you need to do is click on any of these shortcuts, or just right on the cover, and it'll open up the book for you, so that you can begin reading. Well, let me just give you a quick tour around the toolbars here. To get back to your bookshelf, you'll just click on this icon in the upper left-hand corner if you need to return to the bookshelf and open up another book. On the side here, you have the table of contents, search, bookmarks, and notes. So I'm just going to close this for a second while I demonstrate how to change the page view on the book. So you can see here we're at a single page view. At the bottom here, you can select two page layout or one page layout. To turn the pages, you'll just simply click the next button or you can use the tab key on your toolbar to move over and select that button and hit enter to change pages. Now if you know exactly which page that you want to go to, in the bottom right hand corner here you can just enter in that page number, hit enter and it'll take you directly to that page. So I'm going to switch back to a single page layout. And as you can see, this is a little bit small for me to read. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. In the bottom left-hand corner here, you have a couple of options. You can fit to the width of your screen, which will make it nice and clear and easy to read. Or you have this ladder that you can zoom in and out on uh, the text as well. So you can select whatever level is easiest for you to read. Now to use the um, highlighting and note-taking tools, you can see up here in the upper right-hand corner is my highlighting tool. So I can pull that down. You can see that I, there's already a couple highlighting colors in there for me. Now you can um, change the tags on these highlights to make them uh, whatever makes sense for you. So here you can see I've got study for quiz. I've got a pink color that's for my term paper. And you can add extra ones by just hitting edit highlights. You can add a new highlight and give it a, a tag for whatever you might need. Now to highlight, you'll just want to go down and select the color and tag that you need, and then just left click and scroll across the information that you want to highlight. To remove the highlight, it's as easy as right clicking and saying delete highlight, or you can left click on it and hit the X to delete it as well. The next feature is to um, add a note 
to the page or to the highlight. So here I'm going to attach a note to the page. And in the page note, you can give it a title and enter some text in your note as well. Now you have a couple of options in your notes. You can either just save it and keep it private for yourself, or you can notice down here at the bottom that you have the option to click and make that note public. Now remember at the beginning when you established your account, we said that you could enter in the school that you're at just so that you could share notes with other users. So if I click this and make it public, that's going to allow any members of the community at my school who are using this textbook to see my notes as well. That's how you see notes and highlights. To go back and see the notes and highlights that I've made, I can come back over here to the left and click on where it says notes. And it just sort of pulls out this toolbar to the side for me. And I can see here any of the notes, my notes that I have available. You can click on that and it'll pull the note up for you. Now I can also go back in and edit the note. So if I want to choose to make it public, I can do that at that time or add extra uh, notes or change the title, whatever it might be. If I want to get rid of that note, just click on it hit edit and I can delete the note from there as well by just hitting delete. Now to view community notes that other users have placed in the text you can see down at the bottom of this toolbar it says community notes so you just quickly left click on that and you can see all of the notes here that members of my community have added to the textbook. So if I want to see what they've shared I just can click on any number of those notes and it'll open it up and bring me right to that page. To use the search feature, if you just want to search on any uh, keyword or phrase within the book, you can just type that in, click on the magnifying glass, and it'll bring up all of the search results. And it brings it up in two different ways. First is in page order, so in the order that those references appear in the book. Or I can search on instances per page, so the idea that more instances on each page is a more relevant search result. Now if I see perhaps the page or the chapter that I'm looking for, I can just quickly click on that link and it'll bring me right there to that search result. Last but not least are the book, is the bookmark feature. So you can see here that I've already placed a couple of bookmarks, and these are just kind of a nice way to dog ear the page of the book so you can quickly jump to where you need to be. So you can see here that I have a, a bookmark, and you can also label the bookmarks. Let's place a new bookmark in here. So to add a bookmark, you'll, in the upper right-hand corner, you'll just simply click on Add Bookmark, and I can give this bookmark a title. So I'm going to call this one... of Mars and just click Save. So it's almost just kind of like dog-earing the page and I can just quickly jump back to that if I need to in the future. Now one of our favorite features of Cafe Scribe is the Snap Summary. So what this does is it takes all of your notes and highlights and condenses them down into one place. So if I just click on the Snap Summary here, you can see that it's going to bring all of my notes and highlights and put them basically into one page for me and I can print this. Um, it's sort of like creating an instant study guide. You can also see here on the left that I can filter it to include just my highlights, just my notes, or even within my highlights um, a particular category of highlights. So remember I had that highlight for study for the quiz. I can just filter all of that out into one place. So again it's just like having that instant study guide right then and there. Now if you're ever having any trouble navigating around the Cafe Scribe Reader, um, the easiest thing to do is in the upper right hand corner here just click on where it says help and a little question mark and that'll take you right to the Cafe Scribe Online Help Center. So this has everything that you could do in the Cafe Scribe Reader, um, detailed instructions on how to navigate through each step. So we'll look le next at the, the offline mode for Cafe Scribe. The offline reader experience is similar to the online reader experience. As you can see, the bookshelf looks pretty much identical. The only difference is, is that you'll need to select each of the books and 
download them to be available offline. So you can see here my first book I've already downloaded and that's available as indicated by the green check mark and downloaded. If you want to add extra books to download, you just simply click on where it says download and that will start the download process. The process varies depending on the book, the length of the book, the graphics available, all sorts of different factors. Connection speed as well. Once you've downloaded a book to make available offline, it's available to you for 10 days. After 10 days, you'll want to make sure that you just connect back up to the internet and sync everything up so that it knows that your book is still there and still available. To do that, in the upper right-hand corner here, you can see where it says Sync Bookshelf. So not only will that communicate with the system to let me know that my book is still there and available, but it'll also sync all of the notes and highlights that you made online or offline and vice versa so that it's available no matter which of the tools that you're using. Now to access your book, it's the same as the online reader, so you just click on that to open up your book. And you can see here that you have your table of contents, bookmark, and notes. In the notes, you'll be able to see that I have all the notes available to me that I did in the online reader as well. And then you also have the same features of being able to highlight, add highlight notes or page notes, bookmarks, and access your SNAP summary as well. If you add any notes in the offline reader mode, you'll just want to make sure that before you exit, to make sure that you're connected to the internet, and then click Sync Bookshelf. And that'll sync any of the notes that you've made in offline mode up to the online reader as well. So all of your notes and highlights will be available no matter which tool you're accessing your book from. For detailed information on how to use all of these tools, just refer to the online reader demonstration.